Welcome to Bladder Cancer in Women, the Unspoken Demographic. This is a patient insight webinar from the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network. We'd like to thank the Estella Seattle Genetics Partnership, Bristol Myers Squibb, the EMD Serono Pfizer Partnership, Genentech, Janssen Oncology, Merck, and PhotoCure for their support of the patient insight webinar series. Bladder cancer is a devastating disease with an estimated more than 80,000 new cases expected this year alone. While bladder cancer happens more often in men, in 2019, it's estimated that 18,760 women will be diagnosed. One of the most common signs of bladder cancer is blood in the urine, because early signs like that may be ignored or believed to be related to other women's health issues. Women have a higher chance of being told they have an advanced stage of bladder cancer than men when they're finally diagnosed. My name is Stephanie Chisholm, and I'm the Director of Education and Research at Beacon. I'm joined by two bladder cancer experts, urologist Dr. Seema Porton of the University of, San, of California, San Francisco, and medical oncologist Dr. Jeannie Hoffman Census from Johns Hopkins Medical Center to talk about the specifics relating to women and bladder cancer. Welcome, ladies. It's a pleasure to have you here. Stephanie, thank you so much for having us uh, to talk about uh, this topic that I think both Seema and I are really passionate about and for giving us the opportunity to continue to work with Beacon, who's such a great partner in the fight uh, against bladder cancer and um, kind of spreading the word and providing just much needed education. Um, Seema and I are going to start with a, just a quick introduction of what we do and how we take care of patients every day. So I'm Jeannie Huffman Census. I'm a medical oncologist. And what that means is that um, I typically will see patients that are referred to my office from a urologist like Dr. Porton. I see patients with locally advanced as well as metastatic bladder cancer, and we give preoperative chemotherapy um, prior to a radical cystectomy, as well as chemotherapy for patients who have metastatic or advanced disease. Nowadays, we also have other modalities of therapy that medical oncologists can give, such as systemic immunotherapy, like pembrolizumab and other agents, um, as well as targeted agents like ertafitinib and then other chemotherapy agents. I'm going to pass it over to Seema just to, for her to give a quick overview of, uh, of her practice and what she does for patients with bladder cancer. Sure. Thanks so much again for um, allowing us to participate in this uh, educational webinar because as Jeannie said we're both very passionate about this topic so as a urologist and specifically a urologic oncologist I also see mostly patients in referral and mainly patients for consideration of surgery as in case with invasive disease but I also do a lot of cystoscopies and take care of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer and from the same techniques in terms of being able to offer those services, I do see patients in the front line who are presenting with gross hematuria, bladder pain, microscopic hematuria, or what we sort of categorize as a blood in the urine workup from many different aspects. And so I do see patients from across the board, but focus primarily on patients who are already diagnosed with bladder cancer. Thank you, Seema. And I think one of the, the things that we enjoy most about our job, besides from interacting with patients, is that um, as a, a team of people who treat patients with bladder cancer, we, we often interact closely between medical oncology, urology, as well as other subspecialties that take care of this disease, such as pathology and radiology. So we wanted to start out with a little bit of a framework um, for what this webinar will look like. Um, thinking about um, women and their experience in having bladder cancer, one thing that we're kind of understanding is that like many patients, the first time they hear about a bladder cancer, that bladder cancer even exists is when uh, either a patient or someone they love is, is diagnosed with a disease. So really spreading awareness is uh, one of the main tenets of um, the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network. But something um, that we know is very important among patients, practitioners, um, and uh, in others. We understand that women come to medical care with bladder cancer symptoms differently 
um, than men do, and that the experience that they have once they seek and receive medical care may or may not be the same as male counterparts that are eventually diagnosed with the disease. You know, Stephanie mentioned that, you know, women tend to have different outcomes when it comes to having bladder cancer compared to men. Is it based on these, you know, three bullet points that we've discussed already, or could it be related to tumor biology? Or is it a combination of all of these? Um, we're going to touch on all these different facets of the experience of bladder cancer in women during this talk, and then hopefully fill in some of these frameworks um, over the course of this presentation. Uh, next slide. So, you know, Seema and I were, were privileged um, to do an in-person uh, discussion about women and bladder cancer at the last um, annual bladder cancer think tank meeting. And in anticipation of that meeting, you know, we asked for experiences from women that had bladder cancer, and we're going to share some of those with you tonight. Um, some good, some not so good. So this patient shared that she was diagnosed with high-grade TA, possibly T1 bladder cancer at 28 years old with no risk factors, history or other exposure that could result in bladder cancer. Although this patient reports being cancer-free for five years with a young child, she's grateful to be a participant in the discussion and that, of course, women's health is incredibly important to her. Next slide. <clears throat> 